Hello, women entrepreneurs. Thank you for joining me on today's live training. Uh, my name is Tony Hogan. I am a process and profit consultant. I lead a group, a Facebook group called Profit Mastery for Entrepreneurs. And I help entrepreneurs streamline and systemize their businesses so that they can get um, more freedom. Uh, freedom to do whatever it is that you started your business to do, um, take a four week vacation, um, start another business. Um, that's pretty much what I help entrepreneurs do. And today I am going to be talking about the four pillars to building a business that can thrive without you, even if you never plan to leave. So let us jump right in. And I want to make sure that I can see uh, who's online and who's on the live and any comments that come up. So give me just a second. And today, okay, um, who this training is for? This training is for you if you have an existing business and you are wearing all of the hats in your business, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're working um, more hours than you even thought were available in the day. You're working 60 to 80 hours a week, which is definitely not what you signed up for. Um, and you want to be able to bring on uh, a team, bring someone on to help you, or maybe you're just having uh, problems or struggling with delegating. Um, this is for you. If, um, those are the things that you are dealing with. If you are a new business, this training is also for you um, because it will help you to start off on the right track, understanding how important it is to uh, delegate and understanding what the four primary pieces of your business are that are going to help you to get freedom, keeping you from being overwhelmed and bogged down in your business. And so the first pillar that we're going to talk about, and I also call these the four P's because they all begin with P. Uh, the first pillar um, are your processes. Um, and these are the instructions, hopefully written instructions on how things are done in your business, how the task task in your business are completed by you and eventually by someone else. Um, and I want to clarify and make clear that there is a difference because systems and processes are often used interchangeably. And I want to make it clear that they are, while they work together and they have, you have to have processes within your systems, they aren't the same. Uh, your systems are the, it's the whole part of a particular part of your business that, um, helps you to manage or run your business. And then the processes are um, the individual set of instructions within those systems. So um, as a small business, you may have or may have identified six systems in your business. And wherever you are in your business right now, you have every system that you need to run your business. Um, and so if you're a small business, you may have six systems. But within those systems, there could be 10, uh, 30 or 100 processes. So I want to make sure that that's understood. And so your processes are um, maybe you have a process on how to um, name the files in your company, a process for onboarding, onboarding clients, a process for collecting payments. You know, though the processes are the instructions or the steps for carrying out the recurring task in your business. If you have something in your business that you don't do every day, it's not a recurring task, you may not need to document a process on that. And documenting your processes helps to ensure uh, quality, consistency, making sure that things are done the same way every time in your business. And I asked a question in the group yesterday about, you know, what's behind the resistance that's keeping you from hiring and some of the responses are common across the board. It's because you don't have time to train or you don't trust that anybody will be able to do the job the way you do it. When you document your processes uh, and you have it set up where it's easy to understand, you want your processes to be written in a way that someone off the street 
can come in and carry out a task without any input from you at all. But when you have those processes in place, it gives you the freedom and the confidence to hire someone, bring them in to your business, plug them into those processes um, so that they can take you know, those hats and all of the things off of your plate that are keeping you from managing your vision, um, keeping you from expanding and doing the things that help the business grow and then eventually being able to um, take off um, and enjoy your free time. Because essentially, we all started our business for freedom. If that's you, if you started your business because you wanted more freedom, um, drop freedom in the comments. Let me know right now uh, where you are in your business when it comes to um, processes. Do you have your processes documented? Is that something that you are working on? Um, the next pillar in our business is people. Uh, this is something that we struggle with as small business owners and as new business owners because again, we're wearing all the hats, everything, all of the responsibility is on us. Um, but in order to succeed and eventually build a business that's going to be able to thrive without you, you need to make sure that you have the right people in place. You need to have already, well, not already, but you need to be working on, if you haven't, identifying your replacement. And your replacement is going to be that person initially who is going to be able to take the reins when you are, um, when you're out of the day to day operations and then eventually that could be the person who is going to take over the company when you decide to uh, retire or sell the business or just have that business as an asset that is going to help sustain your retirement. Um, it just depends on what your goal is for your business and we should all be starting with the end in, in mind. What is it that you plan to do for your business? What are you building your business for? Um, but having that replacement is going to set you up, uh, set you on the course to the freedom that um, that we all desire in our businesses. Um, the other people are your your team, making sure you have the right people um, in the right seats, doing the right job um, and, and in the right amount. So ha again, we're going to go back to processes because that's very important. Um, and that's really the thing that drives me is making sure that you have your processes in place so that your team members know what to do so that your team members are always on the right page. And so that they are always doing the job the way that you want it done. It's always consistent. If someone is on vacation, another team member can step in their place and everything will continue to flow smoothly. Um, you won't have to worry about anything falling through the cracks because you have your processes and systems in place. Mm, one sec. I hope that you all can't hear that. My phone is ringing and I can't see how to stop it. Okay. The, um, the other people that we don't think about in our business um, as far as being important to building a business that can thrive are our customers because we, we want to have customers that, um, that like us, that enjoy doing business with us um, because we know that it's harder, uh, not harder, but more expensive and, and harder to acquire new customers than it is to satisfy and continue to do business with the customers that you already have. So if you are um, making sure that the customer experience is a great experience, your customers are more likely to stick with you. They're more likely to be repeat customers, buy from you again or long term, and they're likely to refer other um, customers and clients to you. So you want to make sure that your relationships with your customers are always uh, focused on ex excellence and that you're building solid relationships with them. The, the next pillar is productivity. And one of the things, something I heard a few months ago, um, and I'll, I'll clean it up, but it really resonated with me basically is productivity is crap. The way that it's being taught and the way that it's defined um, is really what keeps us overwhelmed because we're trying to put as much as we can 
into the little time that we have. The time we have 24 hours in a day and that is never going to change. And we're trying to cram as much work into those hours as um, possible. But the goal with our productivity is to become more efficient, um, to streamline and simplify the our processes so that we can get the work done that we need to get done so that we can have fewer steps, uh, fewer tasks in achieving the same goal. So uh, with looking at productivity, it's essential that we focus on time management and we make sure that we're managing our time in a way that we're getting the work done. We're not hanging out on social media. Uh, we're not taking phone calls throughout the day from family. Um, that's one of the things that had been um, not a problem for me, but something that was happening with me. But making sure that we are valuing the time that we have and spending that time um, looking at our priorities and doing the work that needs to be done at the time. Um, and not chasing shiny red objects. You know, we, sh we chase those um, new ideas all the time and it gets us distracted and get us off track. Uh, for what we are supposed to be doing. Um, and then the last pillar is our um, profit piece. And that is key. If you have a business and you are, um, regardless of how much you are making in revenue and sales, if you are not um, turning a profit or if you're not maximizing your profit, your business is going to struggle um, because you need to have profit for one to make sure that you are being paid and two to make sure the business grows um, it's one of the measurements of success and as business owners um, just coming up if whether you have um, gone to college uh, and learned about business or if you've taken courses just the things the information that we learn online the um, formula for profit is flawed what we have learned with regard to profit is that sales minus expenses equal profit. But we want to flip that and fix that flaw so that we're looking at it from a perspective of sales minus profit equals expenses. So that revenue that comes into your business, you want to take that profit right off the top um, and that makes sure that you are getting paid first. It makes sure that um, make sure that your taxes are set aside. And I know that's something that uh, we don't like to think about. But when you set your business up in a way that you are managing your profit um, for maximization, you won't worry about paying taxes. Um, it is you know our responsibility as business owners to make sure that we are paying taxes and that we are making an impact in our community. And usually um, that is through um, our our tax responsibility. Um, but you want to make sure that you set aside your profit, set aside the regular comp compensation for you, and then you'll look at your operating expenses. Once all of, once you've been taken care of, you set aside your operating expenses. And what that does is trains us to budget. And again, not be so willing and free to chase shiny objects because we have the money to throw at it. You have to make make whatever is going on, make the money that you have work for whatever is going on in your business. And it will also cause you to look at your current expenses and start to trim those down. You know, we don't need every new piece of software that comes out. Um, a lot of people use um, click funnels. Are they using fusion soft? Are you use active campaign? Are those the right tools for your business? Uh, are they, are you getting the return on investment that justifies those expenses? Or is there something else out there that you can use? Um, is the conference that you're looking at going to, is that something that's going to impact the bottom line on your business? So when we set up our profit formula that way, it causes us to take a hard look at our business. But at, at, the, at the end of the day, we're maximizing our profit and setting ourselves up for success. So again, just to recap, the four pillars 
to building a business that can thrive without you, um, even if you never plan to leave, are processes, making sure that you have your processes uh, within your systems documented so that someone off the street can come in and basically hit the ground running. They can perform a task without you having um, to guide them um, without pulling you away from the things that you are working on. Um, people, make sure that you've identified your replacement in your business. For a lot of us, this can be hard if you don't have children that you've already started to groom uh, with regard to your particular business. We have five children then, and they are all talent-focused uh, entrepreneurs, so our challenge is going to be actually finding a replacement uh, to come in so that we can start um, looking at that freedom track or start looking at the other um, businesses that we want to do to build our enterprise. Um, so more than likely what is going to happen is that we're going to have to bring someone in off the street and groom them to take over for us eventually or to be able to step in and manage operations while we are away from the business or spending less time in the business. Um, um, your replacement, your team, making sure you have the right people in the right seats, uh, doing the right work um, in the right amounts, uh, productivity, making sure that you're managing time so that you are more efficient in producing the results that you desire, whether than trying to cram uh, a lot of work into the limited time that we have. Um, and then your profit, making sure that your profit strategy is set up in a way that you are always getting paid first um, and that you're managing the expenses in your business um, so, so that you're not spending more on expenses than you are on taking care of the key employee, which is you, uh, making sure that you get paid. Um, So the, the bottom line, um, and, and going back to uh, profit, which I, I know I've covered, but um, the processes and profit, those are the things that are really, um, they really get me excited. But when you are maximizing and managing the profit in your business, that leads to more freedom and more growth. Um, and the ultimate goal is for us to make sure that all of those things are um, in place. All of those things are being all four of those things are being managed so that you can build a business that can thrive without you. And when I say that, um, I don't necessarily mean that the only goal or objective is to sell your business. But that's not a bad thing either. A lot of small businesses get started um, for whatever reason. Maybe it's a passion. Maybe they see a need um, in a certain niche. They start a business and it's wildly successful. Um, they have their processes and systems um, dialed in and some big corporation or a bigger company comes in and buys that smaller company, giving that owner the revenue and the funds to go and build another business. And that's something that we don't think about a lot of time because we don't start with the end in mind. You know, what is the ultimate goal? What is your end game? And so when you're building a business that can thrive without you, being built to sell is only one component. Um, as I mentioned before, another goal is to build a business that will survive and thrive and not burn down when you go on a vacation, when you set set out to take a four week vacation, um, then eventually maybe you'll take a two to three month vacation. And who knows, maybe one day you'll want to take a, a hiatus of one year and not having to worry about your business, not having to check in um, several times a day is going to give you the freedom to enjoy your time away from the business. And you may find that when you come back, that your business is doing better than it was when you were there because you're not there getting in the way of the of productivity and getting in the way of your team carrying out their task. 
Uh, and then the, the other thing is building that business so that it's an asset, um, an income producing asset. Um, basically, that means that you've built the business, you have your systems and processes dialed in, you have your replacement in place, you have an awesome team in place. And now um, let's say you're ready to retire. You can retire step away from the business the business is still a going concern you're maybe set up as a board member and you're still receiving income you're still receiving a check from that business because you've built that business in a way that it can be a going concern part of your legacy that's going to continue on build it up in a way that it will um, it can still be here even after you're gone set it up in a way that it's um that it can be replicated and just depending on the kind of business that you have you can you can franchise it or you can open other locations because you have a plug and play system so um, those are the four pillars to building a business that can thrive without you um, i teach on this every week inside of my free group um, inside of my group profit masters Profit, profit Mastery for Entrepreneurs. Um, if you're interested in this topic, if you want to learn how to build a business that can thrive without you, I love to have you join the group. The link to the group is in the description of this live. You can tap on that uh, link and request to be added and I will add, it, add you um, quickly. If you are watching this on the replay and you have any questions, be sure to drop those questions in the comments and I will come back and answer those questions. And again, I would love to have you inside of my uh, community where I am there to support entrepreneurs who are on this journey to freedom, to, to building a legacy, to having operational excellence in your company and to eventually getting to a place where you are building wealth. Um, wealth through additional enterprises and um, investments. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching the replay, uh, thank you for, um, for tuning in and watching the replay. And I will look forward to sharing with you all again in the future. Again, my name is Tony Hogan. I am a profit and I'm a process and profit consultant. I'm a certified business um, process um, professional and I um, work with entrepreneurs to help them streamline and systemize their businesses in a way that gives them the freedom to do what it is they started their businesses to do. Uh, you can click the link above to join me in Profit Mastery for Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.